So, uh, let us continue from last lecture, shall we? Uh, so, let us begin with the Taylor McCall uh, equation, which we derived uh, in the last lecture, and then we will go ahead and uh, see how we can solve for it. Okay? We will do a problem. Okay, so, let me write this down um, uh, from you know, just to remind ourselves basically. Okay. So, this was our Taylor McCall uh, equation, which we derived last time. Now, uh, when we start to, to, to try and solve this, let us uh, do this. Okay. Let us define this non-dimensional uh, parameter. So, let us, let us just define um, here. Okay. This is just a non dimensional parameter, so let us uh, define here and when we do that, let us see what we get. Okay. So, I am just going to uh, sort of uh, write this down. So, what we get here is this. Okay, let me rewrite this. So, what we get as the equation is this okay. and this is the first, um, the, the first uh, bracket. So, basically I, I you know I, I divide throughout by V max square, right. If I do that, what I get is Okay, and uh, v r uh, dash is nothing but v r uh, by v max. Okay, so then this is my first uh, bracket. Similarly, the second one, second one. Okay. that and uh, finally, the last bracket. Okay. So, this was actually our equation 5 like we did last time and let us call this as uh, equation 6. Say. Okay. So, basically what you know we have this uh, Taylor McCall uh, equation which cannot be solved in the uh, closed you know, close form. So, we have to revert to or you know use numerical methods to do that. So, in, uh, in lieu of that what we are doing is we are introducing this. Uh, non-dimensional parameter v dash, which is this, and accordingly, I've been able to transform equation five, which is the Taylor-McCall equation, to this. 
Okay. Now, let us also look at um, uh, what we did last time. So, we when we introduced V max. Okay. So, enthalpy constant, right. So, we can write this, this, right. If I can write this, so here let us say um, what I will do here. So, this also I can introduce this, right. So, what let us do something here, let us <coughs> what, what we will do over here is let us divide by v square throughout, okay. Let us divide by v square throughout and what we get here is that this. Right. So, I divided this equation by v square throughout, I divided this. So, you can see what we what we tend to get over here. Okay. So, therefore, what we get over here is, so this is Mach number, right, is that fine? So, this is Mach number. Well, we can write this as 1 by v dash uh, square also, you know? we can write this as this as well. Now, from here, from here basically, so if I were to write this, therefore, I will write it in terms of v dash. So, therefore, uh, v by v max, right, v by v max, which is equal to v dash is therefore equal to Right. So, this is what we get. Okay. So, this is a relationship which is interesting. So, let us call this as say 7. So, what we basically have done is developed uh, you know got some relationship of this v dash parameter which, which we have just introduced with the Mach number. So, given the Mach number we can in, if you see from this relationship. So, if the Mach number is given Okay, we can calculate v dash and vice versa. Okay, so, let us see whether we should be able to use uh, you know this relationship in our solution to the Taylor-Macall equation. Okay, so, uh, let us begin by looking at a uh, problem. Okay, so, let us say, so, so, we have say a 15 degree half angle cone at 0 degree angle of attack in a free stream with Mach number of Okay. So, we need to find out the shock wave angle, the pressure, temperature, density and Mach number immediately behind the shock wave and on the cone surface. Okay. So, essentially what uh, you know the problem is, is that we have say a cone like that. Okay. We have a cone like that. So, we have a free this um, okay. So, I have a, a cone okay the um, a line of symmetry and this this cone is inclined at 0 degrees to this free stream which is uh, Mach number is 2 and the cone half angle, this cone half angle is given to be uh, 15 uh, degrees, right. So, what we need to find out is the shock wave angle. So, basically when we have a shock wave over here, so when we have a shock wave angle over here, what we need to find out is the uh, shock wave angle. 
okay and uh, the properties uh, of the of the flow immediately behind the shock wave and on the cone surface so essentially what we are talking about is that if i take several say um, uh, radial lines right like we discussed yesterday so if i take say a uh, radial line say just behind the shock wave then we will have several ones in the middle and finally one which is on the which is on the body of the shock wave so what we need to find out is the properties so pressure temperature Mach number density etc right you know behind the shock wave and then move from there and as closer we get to the uh, you know to the cone and here also on the surface so then we also need to find out the properties on the surface like we discussed yesterday that these properties are going to change in this uh, direction in the theta direction however on a single radial line these properties are going to remain constant so our, our problem here is basically the problem to do here is that we have a 15 degree half angle cone which is inclined at 0 degrees to this free stream Mach number Mach 2 flow we have a shock wave so first the job is to find out the uh, shock wave angle theta s and then the properties just behind the shock wave and on the surface of the cone so this is our problem so how do we go about doing this okay what I'm going to do is list step by step okay as to how we're going to go about this all right so uh, let's let's uh, begin okay so let us say uh, let us you know, do this okay so we have a mark uh, two flow okay and the way we're going to stop uh, uh, solve this problem is like in an inverse fashion you will see what i mean by that okay so step 1 is the this is given okay so let us assume so here let us assume theta s step 1 okay just assume uh, theta s okay once we uh, do that okay so theta s is uh, you know theta s is the shock wave angle which is essentially the beta of which we had learned you know earlier for the wedges right which was the theta beta m relationship so um, and now if you do, if if we uh, do this basically now what we will do here is um, calculate okay we will calculate right mn1 which is the so in order to use uh, so we basically we have an oblique shock here right so we're going to use the tables you know the tables to calculate the properties so in order to do that i need to know the normal component of the velocity normal component of the free stream right mn1 and if you remember right so mn1 right so this was the uh, expression which we used last time so mn1 okay so the normal component so i have this so then i i will uh, okay this is inclined so i am going to find out the normal component of this so this is my mn1 right so mn1 and in this so this is a sine beta which in this case is um, so in this particular case of course it is right so in here so now uh, m infinity uh, the free stream Mach number is given as 2 and theta s is something that we have assumed so therefore i get a corresponding uh, m n 1 for this now then we go ahead okay and uh, look up the charts okay and get the corresponding m n 2 right so now here the next thing to do is uh, from the charts okay from normal shock tables rather from uh, the 
normal shock tables. we get m n 2 right and hence we get m 2 which is correct. So, basically if I if I have the you know free stream coming here and you know there is a certain you know deflection like that. So, this is my m 1 and this is my m 2 right. So, this is what we have done so far for an oblique shock. So, uh, you know we will do pretty much that. So, from here what we get is the Mach number behind the shock wave ok. Now, uh, let us just uh, for, a, for a moment step back and look at the difference between you know in a 3D picture like this and a 2D thing which we have done earlier. Okay. In order to do that, let us just uh, look at this. Okay. All right. So, let me go ahead and write that up here, do that here. Okay. okay so, this is the picture the which we had earlier. Right, this was our 2D picture. Okay. Okay. So we have this, right? And then say we had a shock wave out here. Okay, and then we say had a shock wave like that. This way, right? So if we do and um, say this is our free stream. Okay, so this is our free stream. So here, this was the uh, theta, right? this was the theta, this was the beta right. And so, now say if I have, so say I have this ok, I have the uh, free stream coming here right. Then it would deflect ok, so it would deflect and this would make an angle of theta right. So, this is what we have done so far, this is the 2 D picture right. So, this is the this 2 D wedge picture. Now, let us look at the 3 D point of view. So, what do we get here? Now, 3 D here Okay, this and again we have a shock wave. Okay, this is a shock wave. So then and we have the free stream coming in here ok and uh, ok. So, now in here ok, so in here now this is my half cone angle, this is my half cone angle ok and this is the shock wave angle ok. You see the difference, so this is the analogous to the uh, beta over here ok, <laughs> shock wave angle ok. So, now 
let us do this here. So therefore, so say I have the free stream come in here. Okay. Okay, and let us draw a line which is uh, you know draw which is basically parallel to the surface of the cone. So which is say this. Or which is say this. Okay, and this line is essentially theta c. Okay, now, however, now this uh, free stream which comes in over here, okay, it does not necessarily have to. Uh, deflect by theta c. Okay. So, therefore, it is say it deflects like that okay. and this is say some uh, and this it makes an angle say here delta. Okay. So, you see the difference between the 2D wedge and the Uh, 3D cone. Okay, so what happens here is the free stream comes in here, deflects by an angle theta, which is essentially the half uh, wedge angle here. On the other hand, the V infinity here comes in. It doesn't necessarily have to deflect by theta c. It deflects by some angle delta, which is not equal to uh, theta c. So therefore, what we sort of uh, see over here. So the, they both have the same cone, they, they both have the same angles, right. So, theta here, which is the cone angle here, is equal to theta c, okay. They have the same cone angle, they, which is equal to the same half cone angle there, okay, in terms of the uh, similarities, okay. The shock wave angle of course, is not the same. The shock, the, if you have a 2D wedge, the shock wave angle is going to be different than if you have a 3D cone. So, therefore, this beta and this theta s are not same. Okay? And also of course, uh, the deflection angle, right? the deflection angle. Um, so, uh, or rather if, if I may write it like this. deflection angles are also different. Okay. So, essentially this would be, uh, so this is to basically to explain this. Okay. So, now going back, so what we have done uh, here is, so we have assumed theta s and what we have been able to, we will basically use the normal shock tables and found out the Mach number behind the shock wave. Okay. Let us move to uh, step 2. Okay. So, once we do this, let us move to step 2. Okay. Okay, if I do this, so now here, um, okay, so let me uh, sort of uh, draw a uh, picture here. Okay. So, now uh, here, Okay, so this is it, and then we have, of course, the shock wave, or let us say we have the shock wave. I am sort of exaggerating this a little bit. Okay, so we have that. So now, so therefore, this is my cone angle, and this is the shock wave angle. Okay. Now, say we have a free stream which comes in. Okay. We have a free stream that comes in. 
right and that is deflected let's call it that and and this angle of course is delta right this angle is delta and this angle is theta s right this angle is theta s now we also know which we did uh, just now okay so basically we have a velocity component in the radial direction and one in the perpendicular direction which is this okay now so therefore uh, we could have several radial directions from here to here isn't it so now let us say this angle so therefore this angle here so this angle here we can call this as um, alpha right if i have this as alpha so now if you if you look at this picture itself if you look at this particular picture okay so this alpha is nothing but the right if you look at this alpha is basically theta s okay minus delta so this alpha is theta s minus uh, delta if you look at this uh, picture this is the alpha right okay now again v dash of course is equal to this right and again of course this v r dash is v dash cos alpha and v theta dash is v dash sin alpha okay so if you look at this picture over here okay so v dash okay v dash is essentially v r dash square and v theta dash square and v r dash okay v r dash is v dash uh, v dash cos alpha and v theta dash is v dash sin alpha <coughs> if you look at this picture itself okay so if you uh, have this now okay if you have this so therefore um, and now we will use this equation a 7 okay now what we will use is equation 7 now v dash is something that we uh, need now m2 m2 is something that we have found out right m2 is something that we have uh, found out over here so if we put m2 here we will get at the corresponding v dash right this is what we have said so this is an equation which you can use so m2 is something uh, that we have found out okay using the normal uh, chart ta no, normal shock tables so therefore if i if i use uh, equation 7 now and input m2 here i will get the corresponding v dash if i get v dash then of course i can calculate the v r dash and v theta dash okay so uh, basically what um, uh, you know we we what we will do here is that get v dash using 7 okay so using 7 or you can sort of you know do it here also if you want okay we can do it here also if you want so if we input this m2 okay into equation 7 and get v dash okay so the there we are okay so once we get this okay once we get this so then the next step would be okay so step 3 would be okay so this is something that we had also uh, written uh, last time right now uh, equation 
6. Okay. So, I am going to write this again. Basically, the uh, Taylor Merkel theory, Taylor Merkel equation, when we wrote that using the non dimensional uh, parameter v dash. Okay. So, now we are going to use, if you see that equation, so that equation basically is has just one uh, unknown which is v r dash. Okay. So, what we are going to do is now, uh, uh, what we are going to do here is in, in, in step 3, okay, is that we are going to use that equation okay, and calculate v r dash. Okay. We will calculate uh, v uh, r dash. Okay. And in the steps of theta, okay, in steps of theta marching away from the uh, you, you know cone. So, uh, what we are going to do is here let us say use equation 6, okay. using equation 6, okay. um, in steps of uh, delta uh, theta, Okay. Marching away from the shock to the cone. Okay. So let me explain what basically we we are going to try and uh, do over here. So, essentially, so this is the uh, shock wave. So, this v r dash is going to change, right? This v r dash. So, what we are going to do is uh, when we, we have the Taylor Merkel uh, equation, right? So, we are going to take that, okay? And we are going to take uh, several radial lines here, okay? We are going to take, say, uh, several radial lines, okay, between this theta s and uh, theta c, okay? this is theta s and this is theta c and we are going to move from here. We are going to start from here. Okay. Let us say, let us look at this picture over here. So, what we are going to do is we are going to take so on and so forth. So, what we are going to do is say on our, these angles are say these are all delta theta. Okay? You do that. So, what we will do is we will start from here, we will start from here, calculate the v r dash okay? and then again come on to this next, okay? this come on to this uh, next radial line, calculate the v r dash there, go to the next uh, radial line, calculate the v r dash here. Go to the next one, calculate the radial line there, v r dash there, and so on and so forth. So, we will start from here, we will start okay, um, near the shock, okay, march away from the shock and towards the cone. Okay. So, calculate this v r dash in steps of delta theta. Okay. So, basically, which means that we will uh, calculate the v r at various um, uh, radial lines. Okay, between the shock and the uh, in, in the surface of the cone, right? So when we do that, so uh, we we will use we will have to solve the uh, Taylor Merkel equation. Now that equation, as you've seen, is the complicated one. So let we will we'll come back to that. So what we'll do is we basically use a fourth order runge kutta method. Okay, when we do that. Okay, so. Um, Having done that, so once we find out, so once we find out uh, v r dash, okay, once we find out v r dash, so what we are going to do is calculate v theta, right. If you remember, uh, v theta <coughs> this was, right. So, for each, so at each radial line when you get a v r dash, you will also get a v theta dash. Okay. At each radial line, you will also get a v uh, theta, uh, v theta dash. Okay. All right. Now, 
So, now we keep doing this. Okay? Now, uh, what was our problem? Now, our problem was that we need to find out the properties which is behind the shock wave and on the surface of it, on the surface of it. Okay? So, uh, now, so um, uh, when we start from here, okay? so we are going at various steps and we uh, you know, keep going farther and farther away from the shock wave and at some point, we should be reaching the surface of the cone. Right? Okay, so, like I said, this was like an inverse problem. So, we are actually beginning from here and coming back to the cone. Okay? So, now, uh, say uh, at a particular uh, theta here. So, we are moving, uh, moving away from it. So, say theta s, you know, minus delta theta, minus 2 delta theta, minus 3 delta theta, so on and so forth. Okay? So, let us say, okay, let us say, uh, okay, this is step 4. This is step 4. Okay? So, now, uh, say at um, we take say n uh, number of, okay, so, so say a number of So, say the number of radial lines okay, between here is say n. Okay? Say we have n uh, radial lines and <coughs> And uh, you know uh, the angle step is uh, delta theta. Okay, so essentially n into uh, delta theta is equal to alpha, is equal to theta s minus theta c. That's what it is. Okay, all right. So if I uh, do that, okay. Um, now, so therefore, when I have so therefore, therefore, okay, theta s, okay, minus n delta uh, theta right so when i get theta s okay minus n delta theta i should have reached right i should have reached the surface of the cone isn't it because what we've done here is that we're just dividing this space which is the angle alpha which is theta s minus uh, theta c right and uh, we just divided that that uh, space into n using n radial lines each spaced out at delta theta. So, therefore, when I now start back from here, so when I start from here once I have covered this right once I have covered this alpha which is theta s minus n into delta theta, I should have reached the surface of the cone right. So, I should have reached this surface of the cone. Now, at the surface of the cone. So, therefore, now at every step when I do this, at every step, at every radial line, I get a v r dash and I also get a corresponding v theta dash. Okay? We get these two velocities. Now, once we come here, once we come to the surface of the cone, so when we do this, when we have reached this, when we are doing this uh, theta at this radial line, which is you know basically the surface of the cone, then we get a v r dash of course. Now, what should this v theta dash be? Come to think of it, if you look at this, okay, this is v r dash, this is v theta dash. Okay? So, the radial line now, so essentially the radial line now is here, is not it? The radial line is here. So, this is your v r dash and this is the corresponding perpendicular uh, velocity component. In other words, does this make any sense? So, this is a solid cone surface and I have a component of velocity which is normal to it. What should it be? 0. So, we have to satisfy the zero normal boundary condition here. So, as a result of which this v theta dash should be 0. Okay? This v theta dash should be 0. So, this is essentially the zero normal boundary condition that we are uh, uh, implementing at this particular point. 
okay. So, um, however, obviously, so uh, now in here, okay, so now this thing here, uh, this theta s minus n delta s. So, this here, of course, this should also be equal to 15 degrees in our particular case, right, because now this is theta c. So, theta s, right, we have done theta s minus n uh, delta theta and minus n uh, delta theta that is now equal to theta c, is not it? This is theta c. So, in our particular case, this is given as 15 degrees. So, at 15 degrees, of course, v theta dash this is should be 0. This is um, uh, this is what one should achieve, but considering that this is a numerical procedure, obviously, this is not going to be so. So, therefore, there is going to be a certain amount of error. Okay, when we do this. So, uh, when we reach 15 degrees essentially, we will have to implement the zero normal boundary condition, because that will then tell the numerical solution that I have reached the surface of the cone. Okay. All right. So, um, of course, there will be uh, you know the error. So, the another reason is now I should have reached 15 degrees here. Okay. Now, the reason uh, now what will happen is that I will not get this zero normal boundary condition. Now, wh wh why will the error creep in? What is the reason for this error? The reason for the error is that I have assumed theta s, right? I had assumed theta s for the given Mach number, I had assumed a theta s. So, what I have to do is to reassume this, okay, redo this. Okay, in a better fashion, so that I get close to this 15 degrees as well as this. So, once uh, so this theta s minus n delta theta corresponding to v theta dash equal to 0. So, this to be implemented. So, I have to continue to iterate over this. So, once I uh, once I continue to do that, so as soon as so that I get close to uh, this, I am never going to get you know completely 0. It is a numerical procedure remember. So, there is going to be some errors, but we are going to get we are going to try and get as close to this as possible. right? So, that is what we are going to do. So, uh, we therefore, you know continue to iterate, we will continue to iterate till we get you know this okay? and, and once we get close enough we within a say a 10 to the power minus 3 tolerance. So, then that is the shock wave angle. So, then that becomes a shock wave angle, which was also part of the problem. First thing what we wanted to know is uh, what is the uh, shock wave angle. So, then we would have correctly assumed, correctly estimated the shock wave angle. Okay. So, you see the uh, difference here, unlike what we have done before, where we just look at the charts, that is not what we are doing here. Okay. So, we are going to, uh, therefore, we are going to um, uh, assume and start, and then we iterate over this criteria and then once this gets satisfied within a certain you know allowable tolerance then we get our uh, shock wave angle theta s okay so after that the stuff is about getting the properties okay behind the uh, shock wave so once you come over here if you remember so i'm going to stick to say yeah well you know i get a couple of diagrams here Okay. Now, some of the properties, now if you remember, so these were, I am going to just write this out. Okay, so now the now <coughs> the point was to get to calculate the properties just behind the shock wave and on the surface of the um, uh, cone. Now the way it stands here, you can actually calculate the properties in the entire region, in the in, in the entire region here. You don't have to restrict yourself to just here and here. Okay, that's what's asked in the problem, but we can actually calculate it anywhere in within this space. 
Now, if you look at this here, so this is the um, uh, you know temperature, pressure, and density. Now, this Mach number, okay. Now, this Mach number corresponds to V dash, okay. So that V dash is at every radial location. So, uh, like we did over here, right? If you if you look over here, for at every radial line, we're going to have a uh, V dash. So we're going to have a V dash over here. So V dash one, V dash two, V dash three, four, and so on and so forth. So this Mach number actually corresponds to that V dash. So when we go in step, so when we are basically going from step from here to 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 this particular radial line. So then we can actually calculate the uh, V dash here, okay? Because uh, we basically solve the Taylor McCall equation for V R dash, and then we calculate the V theta dash using this. Hence, we can get V dash, okay? So once we get this V dash, so then we can input that in terms of the Mach number here, and we can get the uh, thermodynamic properties. So once we come Oh, we keep doing this, we keep doing this over the entire uh, entire region here behind the shock and once we come over here, so basically you are looking at the radial line which is at theta c which is the half cone angle. So corresponding to that here V theta dash of course should be 0 because it is the uh, 0 normal boundary condition. Okay, we will implement that. So we have a V r dash is essentially V dash. So then that is the Mach number which we should be implementing over uh, here. Okay. That is the Mach number we are going to implement over here and use these uh, parameters, uh, use these equations rather to calculate the properties, um, uh, to calculate the properties behind the uh, shock wave. So that uh, basically is the entire uh, procedure, okay. Th which is I think uh, pretty uh, simple as such. So the the the, uh, the first step is basically we said we'll assume theta s given Mach number, so we get uh, m two, m two. Correspondingly, we put m two into the uh, equation when we get uh, you know this uh, v dash. Okay. Once we get v dash, then we come here. So we calculate uh, v r dash and v uh, theta dash using McCall equation and uh, this and we march away here. So at every at every at various radial locations between the shock wave and the surface we get uh, the V R dash and V theta dash and we calculate also the thermodynamic properties using these expressions and when we come uh, you know we implement the zero normal boundary condition when we come to the surface. That is pretty much it right. <coughs> the main uh, the I mean uh, the complicated part or the uh, majority of the work out here in the problem is essentially here, isn't it? Essentially here in step three, where we need to calculate V R dash, okay, using the equation six. This is the Taylor McCall equation where we're going to basically use a fourth order. Right. What we are going to do is uh, basically we are going to use a, a fourth order Runge-Kutta method okay, to, uh, for, for here. So what I will do is in the next lecture we will basically go over that. Okay. We will go over this particular uh, step where we use the Runge-Kutta method to solve the taylor mccall equation for V r dash. Okay. We will continue uh, with that and uh, hopefully we should be um, able to uh, complete the solution since there. So this is an basically the, the you know these steps step 4 or you know um, yeah so I, I guess uh, we can write this as step 5 and this is uh, calculate you know thermodynamic properties. Okay. That is it. So, these are basically 5 steps and we are done. 
So what we're going to do in the next lecture is basically uh, go over in detail about the fourth order Runge-Kutta method and how we're going to use that to solve uh, the uh, Taylor-McCall equation. Okay, right, that should be all. Thanks.